Hi there, this is Vincent here. In this video, we're going to talk about issues using wildcard domain DNS with ingress controllers on multiple Kubernetes clusters. We'll first start off describing the issues using whiteboarding, then follow up with a demo showcasing RV multi-clusters Kubernetes operator, also known as AMKO. So let's jump straight in. Okay, we'll start explaining to you what's the issue with using wildcard domain on multiple Kubernetes clusters. You have uh, two data centers, okay? So this is, let's say, site one, and this is site two, and you have like um, your Kubernetes cluster running. Right. And let's say for example, okay, so this is sorry, this is cluster one, cluster two, okay. And let's say you have some um services running, right? You have multiple uh containers, right? So and let's call this for example, you know, it's the same application, right? at one uh, running across all these ports right you deploy the same applications across uh, both clusters okay so if you if you want your um, users to access these apps and you want to expose to uh, external users typically you will use an ingress controller right right so you deploy an ingress controller at both sides okay and let's say you call this um, application um, you give them a fqdn name at one dot ace port dot com okay and same here, you use the same ingress on both sides, right? And basically, the ingress controller will uh, pass the traffic or load balance the traffic to your application, right? Okay, so basically, once you set up your ingress, and also it's worthy to mention, right? Okay, so usually you have a virtual IP. That's over here, right? Let's call this then dot ten dot ten dot ten. And over here we will use twenty dot twenty dot twenty twenty. Alright. So let's talk about the DNS. So you could be using you know uh Infobox or any other DNS that um server that you have in your enterprise. You need, to conf you need to configure uh, the domain name so that it resolves to these two virtual IP address, right? So, so you typically what you do here is you go into your DNS um, and you, you, you need to put in like uh, using a wildcard domain because, for example, you can't be uh, going to configure your DNS whenever you're developer create a new application right like for example there's app 2 and you need to go and configure your dns um, every time your developer requests an fqdn so you go to your dns server so what you do here is you set up a wildcard domain this is asterisk.acepod.com And you put in two uh, record, right? So this is a record. You can put in two IP address. Um, you can put in 10.10.10.10 and 20.20.20.20. Correct? So every time, you know, your user 
trying to access app one dot right app one you will return you know either 10 10 10 or 20 20 20 20 okay same thing right if your user request for app 2 or anything that's in front of this aspot.com you will you will the dns server will reply either one of this uh, virtual ip address okay so what's the issue over here okay so for example um, you know let's say for example your site um, goes out right so basically you know the whole um, the whole site goes down right but then when your client ex uh, requ um, requests for the uh, domain name right they will still your DNS server will still reply either of this address right so basically 50 percent of your users now uh, might be affected correct and the other thing that could happen is for example um, you know the the with this once you set up the virtual IP every time when you deploy the apps um, you need to make sure that you deploy at both times and what happens that for example when you deploy app 2 right let's say you deploy app 2 over here and you forgot to deploy it in the second site right so when the users comes in to access right um, they will be given like when the users try to request for app2.esport.com and when they were given the IP address of 2020-20 when you sit here right there's no app2 to serve so now you see um, the issue with uh, wildcard domain uh, with multiple Kubernetes cluster so now we will talk about how do we solve this um, issue over here okay so let me erase some of the things so that we can actually make it faster right okay the thing here is you know uh, with the use of AKO right stand for RV Kubernetes operator so this AKO right run as a port okay so there is something called the RVSE right it is a, a, a virtual machine and it's also running ingress control over here right so you deploy it this is a, this is a virtual machine okay and it acts as an ingress controller for uh, the application so now we are talking about the solution okay so let's say you deploy the controller okay so this is the rv controller okay, so the rv controller will manage the service engine and as well as you know ako will also update the rv controller right whenever you create ingress you will update the ingress uh, controller then controller will configure the uh, rv se which is running as a um, ingress controller well so that's all good right uh, but how do we actually solve the dns issue over here okay so there's a slightly different over here so uh, in the case of using uh, rv solution right we have something called the amko uh, which is stand for rv multi clusters uh, kubernetes operator okay so you run the amko here okay so same thing amko will actually update the rv controller right so what we have here is another service engine okay so the rv service engine okay but this time around this is running dns right effectively this is a gslb okay so what it does here it's you know 
uh, once you create a uh, with AMKO, once you create an ingress, it will also update the DNS. Okay. So here is, for example, now in your in your corporate DNS server, okay, instead of configuring uh, a records, you configure what we call a uh, DNS delegation. Okay, so you delegate a spot dot com to this is a, a NS name server record, right? So you have two records over here. So for example, this IP address, let's give it like um, 30.30.30.30. Okay, and this is 40.40.40.40. 40. 40. So you have two name record here. So basically, what this does is anything there is, um, you know, anything that is above or before this aspot.com, it will say, you know, go look for another DNS server who has who has this information, right? So the this RV DNS over here. Okay, let's say this is the one there is 30.30.30.30, okay? So when, when whenever there's an ingress actually created, right? So for example, you know, I create app one inside one. So it will update the DNS, right? With, for example, app onesportcom it will say, okay, um, this goes to this VIP, right? And site 2 also the same, it's the same URL, so it says once the application's up, right, there's health monitor that is actually monitor it, you will, you will update the DNS, uh, update the controller, the controller will talk to the RV uh, SCDNS, right, it will say, okay, so site 2 is up, so I will update it with my virtual IP address. Right, so effectively, you know, um, there's some load balancing that's happening, and your users can get to both, uh, both side, right? Um, for application one, right? Same thing for app two, um, you know, if you deploy on both side, same thing will happen. Okay, so let's say for example, uh, the same scenario happened, right? And site two actually goes down, so your application one's uh, is no longer uh, uh, accessible. So with the health monitor in the RV uh, service engine, the RV DNS service engine, it will detect, oh, site 2 is actually down. And what it does, it it will remove this 2020-2020 from uh, its DNS server, right? So when the user is trying to query app1.aspot.com, they will no longer get 2020 2020 2020 so they will not uh, will get they will not get into some errors right so so you can see now just um, this actually solved uh, the the issue with uh, you know using wildcard domain DNS the other thing is you know let's say for example now it's not because of the site failure and it's because of some you know um, developer they might they might be forgetting to put in the application uh, on on one on one side, right? So let's say for example, there's there's app two over here, right? And let's say they forgot to put it in site one, right? They put it in site two. So what will happen is you know, once you create this. Ingress, they will update with just 20.20.20.20, right? And, you know, when your user query app2.aspot.com, 
they will not be given uh, you know just a static uh, record which is either one of the 10 10 10 or 20 20 20 right they will just be given whatever there is up right so basically this is the high level overview of the solution uh, So let's take a look at the demo. All right, so this is the demo. So came out of the list of demos that I would like to show you. So I have uh, two um, Tanzu Kubernetes clusters configured that's on uh, uh, VSP with Tanzu, right? So I will show you, I already have the ingress configured in there. So I'm gonna show you uh, first the ingress being configured. Then I'm going to show you a demo like using wildcard domain. Uh, I also have the ingress controllers deployed so I can quickly easy show you uh, configure a wildcard domain and show you what's really the issue over there, right? Um, so basically, I will induce a failure in one of the clusters, right? Basically scale the, the ports to uh, replica zero. It's a deployment, so I'll scale the deployments to uh, with zero ports so it means the ingress is still configured right and but then there's no ports behind that ingress so you will see what happened when you use a wildcard domain uh, with deployment like this now of course I will show you um, the solution right which is based on RV Kubernetes operator as well as RV multi-clusters Kubernetes operator AMKO uh, and then we'll do the same thing which is induce a failure and then see what will happen uh, to the applications, right? Or uh, the user experience, how does it look like? So what you're seeing here is uh, on the left is on the, uh, my jump host, right? It's acting like a client. Then on the right hand side is where I will show you like um, multiple things like the RV controllers. Uh, this is vSphere and also there's also NSX manager over here. So I told you about, I have two clusters being set up, right? So these are my guest clusters on vSphere with Tanzu, right? Um, I also integrated it with um, the RV ingress controller already for, so each cluster has their own ingress controller, okay? So I'm going to show you the ingress. Um, so I'm going to switch context to uh, the, the TKC04, okay? So you can see here, okay, I will show you the deployment first. Okay, so there is this application, there's two ports running and you can see the ingress on this cluster. Okay, so basically it's, um, so this is the, the domain name, FQDN, and then this is the ingress controller virtual IP. Okay, so same thing, I'm going to switch context to the TKC05. Okay, and I'm going to get the deployments. So I basically use the same um, manifest to deploy. Okay, and now we get an ingress. So you can see that I'm actually using the same uh, FQDN for both applications of, or rather for the same application deploying on two different clusters. So as you can see here, this is the, the, the virtual IP for the ingress controller. Okay. And um, you know, so, so obviously I haven't configured the DNS and I won't be able to resolve the name, right? So uh, let's see. So I'm, my, my DNS server is uh, this 192.168.1.0. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just do and I, I think I'm not gonna uh, get any replies, right? So okay, so that's I if I try to call to the application, it will not work. So now I'm gonna go and configure the DNS and I'm gonna use wildcard domain uh, to do that. Okay. Okay, so this is my DNS server over here. Um, I will configure 
so basically it's ako.aspot.com, right? So this is the aspot.com. I will add in a new uh, domain, right? Ako. And now, because I have two VIPs over here, right? I will add in the wildcard domain. Uh, So one is one eight one, which is TKC04. Okay. And I'll add another one. So basically, you know, you want to send when when your user query the DNS, you want the users to get, you know, to both of these clusters, right? So you may th be thinking about like, you know, what happened if one of the cluster fails, or you want to do active active load balancing to both clusters, right? So you will typically do this, right? You want to send traffic to both of them. So I'm I'm going to um, again. You can see that you know when you query uh, the DNS server, it's going to give you both replies. And you can see that the way they reply, it's like you know uh, they do some form of kind of round robin here, like you know give you one eight one first and give you one eight five. Then you know, but it give you two DNS replies at the same time. Okay, so now if I'm tries to to call to this FQDN name, right? So we will, okay. So maybe I should do this first, right? So you know you can you can put at one dot You give you this. You give you um uh, this virtual IP. So you can basically put with a wildcard domain. You can actually put anything you want, right? Like app two. It will still give you the same application. But of course, you need to configure the respective ingresses. So I have the ingress already being configured. Okay, so now I can actually call to this app one, which previously I already have configured, right? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So you can see that there's some res response. Okay, so if I would get, um, I would like to see, you know, where is this port running? I can get to see the ports. And this one is actually running in uh, the TKC05, right? So the second cluster, which is based on 185, right? So, so if I ping at one dot AKO, yeah, see, I will get 185, right? Okay, so now um, since I'm I'm assessing 185, uh, what happened if I will to scale the deployment to uh, you know to zero. So you can see that now I have two ports running. So I, this, this is the sec second uh, or the third demo, right? I'm going to induce a failure over here. So I'm going to scale this deployment right to zero, right? As you can see over here. Okay, so now it's zero, right? You you get ingress, it's still it's still there. Okay, and I'm gonna ping right, of course the, the virtual IP of the ingress controller is still is still pingable. And now I'm gonna call it. You can see that I couldn't access the server, right? And that's the issue over here, right? Um, that's the, the is 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 the static entry in the DNS server, and when you try to query again, like using um, uh, Dick, right? You can see that it still responds to the the virtual IP, right? But the application is really down, right? So there's really no way that you can go granular with a DNS server. There's no health monitoring being done, so they don't really know whether the app is. I mean the DNS the DNS server don't know whether the app is up or down, right? Okay, so um, now let's talk about the solution. Okay, so let me scale back uh, the deployment to two. Okay. Okay, so now it's up and running. So you can see that um, I will call again, of course. Uh, okay. Maybe it takes some time. Okay, that well it, it comes back up and I let me see whether now where, where it gets to, right? So 
Oh, so, sorry. Get pause. Yeah, so it still goes back to that 185, right? So it kind of like the user actually caches the DNS on the client. So, um, so you really have to wait for the uh, for it to time out, right? The DNS to time out. So you can see that there will be some issues with user experience over here, right? With this wildcard uh, DNS, you know. At the same time, you you want the you want to uh, provide a self service way uh, for your developers to create their ingresses so that they can quickly get their uh, deployment done. But you see that's a problem. Uh, you know, you 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 will face another problem over here. Okay, so now let's jump into the solution. Um, okay, so now I have the I have the pods back running up. Okay, so now instead of using um, wildcard domain DNS, okay, I will add in um, a DNS delegation. So basically, what I've done is I already have an RVDNS uh, server running, right? So you can see here, this is the RVDNS, right? And you click on it. Um, so it, it's acting like a, a GSLB. Uh, so you can see the IP address over here. So I add in a, a record for here, uh, for this RVDNS01. And I'm going to add in a DNS delegation. So anything that you know anything that has ako.aspot.com it will actually send it to uh, the rvdns okay so rvdns01aspot.com resolve okay yep okay so now let's say for example um So now I can query, I can start query, let's see. Okay, so now I'm querying this, right? You can see that, um, yeah, I, I already have the ingress configured, right? So um, you can, I mean, I can show you on the RV controller. And, and that's the reason why it's being updated, um, you know, already. So you can see that over the dashboard, right? So. Um, I have the ingress being configured. So this is AKO. So AKO already configured the uh, the ingress. Okay, let me stop this, right? And then you can see that this is the the ingress that the FQDN they have configured. Okay, and this is the other clusters, right? So each uh, ingress have two ports uh, running in it, right? So you can actually see the, the the IP address of the ports running over here. Okay, so I can show you the AKO and AMKO running, right? So they run in the namespace that I have placed called RV system. So you can see that AKO and AMKO is running over here, right? So it's running in one of the clusters. Uh, for MKO is required to run on one of the clusters. So if you, if you have multiple sites, then of course you have multiple AMKO, right? So I'm just simulating over here with multiple clusters over here. Okay, so so now uh, with AKO and AMKO configured with the DNS delegation, right? Uh, you can see that while you do the, um, the deck is showing you both and it's, it's being round robin over here, right? So now I can assess the application uh, right. Good. Okay. So I'm going to induce the same uh, failure into the application. So this is this I believe is getting to one eight five. Oh, sorry. So it's still getting to one eight five. No. Okay. So this is in this is in TKC zero four. Okay. Okay, you can see here to be the right so you can see over here yeah this one okay so i'm i'm going to scale the deployments to um, 
to zero, right? So that you can actually see. Okay, so let me show you over here, right? So there's this, this the beauty of the UI. Um, okay, let me make it smaller a bit. Okay, you can see over here. So you can see that, you know, there's health monitor happening and they are detecting the ports that are running. So I'm going to scale the deployments to, to zero. Right. Okay. At the moment, I will do it's probably too quick already. Okay. So you can see that it's still responding, uh, 185, right? Which is the virtual IP of the ingress controller in, in TK605. So give it a while. So you can see that the deployment is already down, right? And now you can see, right, the DNS server don't reply 185 anymore, right? It's, it goes to 181 now, right? So let me show you the deployment, right? You can see now the deployment is zero, okay? First, the ingress is still available, it's still there, but there's no ports serving it. And now if I try to curl, yeah, you can see that it goes to, you know, the client is being served by uh, cluster TKC04 clusters, right, the ports. So you can see that now this is CXPLJ, right? So let me switch the context to cluster four. Yeah, see, right? So I can I can bring up the ports uh, and you can see that it is back online. So let me do the, the yeah. So now um, you can see on the right here, right? The ports are getting up. So you can see the health mon is the health monitoring is detecting whether is it up or down, right? Oh yeah, the other thing that I didn't I didn't really show you over here is the GSLB service, right? So you can see that it's still down, right? So it takes a while for it to comes up. Um, so once the port is cut, okay, so it's already up, right? So we are waiting for the GSLB service. Oh, okay, there you go. You see, um, it's showing up over here, right? It's responding to the second, the TKC05 cluster, which is the second clusters. Yeah, let me refresh this. Okay, see, um, both are up, right? So this is the this is the the health monitoring of the AMKO. Uh, so as you can see that it's kind of intelligent in a way, right? Or what I call intelligent DNS. So it knows whether the ports are up and down and replies the DNS queries accordingly, right? So this really solved the, the wildcard DNS problems uh, when you have multiple Kubernetes clusters over here, right? And yeah, so I hope you find this um, demo and video useful, right? So if you'd like to know more about uh, the solutions, uh, please contact any of the VMware reps. Uh, we will be able to help you um, with your ingresses problems in your uh, Kubernetes deployment. So thank you so much for watching. Um, I will see you next time.